Well, welcome to the C19 experience. Thank you both so much for coming and being willing to share your story and tell us a little bit about your journey through COVID. So what I would love to do, if it's okay with both of you, is just start at the beginning. Um, tell me how COVID entered your life. Well, uh, as far as I can remember, uh, I was out at one of the northwest sides of Indianapolis's uh, restaurants. Mm -hmm. And I was there with uh, my family. My sister was having her birthday oh. celebration there. And um, I noticed that I had a little tickle in my throat mm -hmm. while I was there. And uh, I didn't know that my sister, she was experiencing the same thing at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, as this went on, it seemed to get a little worse as the evening progressed. Oh, okay. And um, after that, after the evening was over, I went home and, you know, laid down, went to bed normally, as usual. And um, the next day I got up and I just seemed to be a little more sicker than I was at the restaurant. Mm. So I said, well, maybe this is a, a cold coming on or so, you know, mm -hmm. I'll take some medicines and uh, maybe it'll go away. Mm -hmm. Well, come the third day, it seemed to get a little worse. Mm. You know, the medicines weren't working or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And by this time, uh, my wife was celebrating her birthday. It was the weekend. And uh, of course, a lot of people know that I'm a DJ. And so I did the music for my wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, I struggled that evening trying to get through the evening mm -hmm. with her and the birthday. So after it was all over, I said, wow, I'm ready to go home and go to bed because that evening all I drank was water all through the duration of the party. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's said, something well, that's normally really easy for you to get through, right? Yeah, you do it all yeah, the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. All the time. But mm -hmm. it was a struggle this particular day. Mm -hmm. So after I got home, I went straight to bed, laid down, and uh, got up the next morning. Still wasn't feeling good. So I said, Donna, uh, I need to go to the immediate care or the hospital or something, you know, to see if I can get some meds mm -hmm. for this. So she took me to the immediate care. I got some medicine thinking that it was maybe bronchitis. Mm -hmm. I've had bronchitis in the past. So uh, got the medication for that. I did took it, it feel like bronchitis? Like It kind of did at first. Mm -hmm. But uh, normally the meds, when I take it for bronchitis, uh, normally does the trick. You know, I start feeling, you know, pretty good immediately mm -hmm. after the first day or so. Mm -hmm. But uh, it wasn't doing anything for me. And so I was kind of... Uh, kind of tired of taking the medicine for a couple of days and no, mm -hmm. not feeling any better. Mm -hmm. So I laid down again, you know, that whole evening. And then finally, my wife was in the lower level of our home and I was upstairs and I called her and said, Donna, I said, I got to get out of here. I need to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So she said, come on, let's go right now. So she, mm -hmm. we gathered up our things and we took off and we went. So to, what were you thinking? What, what did you think was going on? I know he was very sick. Mm -hmm. So I said, immediately, let's go. Okay. Did you guys think it was COVID or did you no. didn't have it in your mind that it could be COVID? Okay. No idea. No idea. So what hospital did you go to? I went to uh, IU West. IU uh, West. Yes. Okay. Uh, we live in the Avon Plainfield area. And so that was the nearest hospital to us. Okay. So I went there and uh, Donna had a little sickness herself. So they checked us both out. And uh, they, Donna was able to go home. Mm. They said, your husband has to stay. So mm. they covered her up and they let her come in and uh, say goodbye to me. And she said that when she left, she never would have thought that I'd be gone as long as I was, you mm -hmm. know. So she, uh, my wife really went through it, you know. Yeah. She really did. Uh, That's yeah. yeah. So how long were you in the hospital? I think it was a, a period 
of maybe a, a month or four or five weeks in the hospital and then another two to three weeks in rehab. In rehab. In rehab. So how was that month or so for you with your husband in the hospital, with COVID, this new virus that we were all learning about in real time? Yeah, it was horrible. Stayed at home. I was there by myself. I had the quarantine. Mm -hmm. So I was there at home by myself. I had friends dropping things off at the door. Mm -hmm. And uh, my phone never stopped ringing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so right, what month, right around what time of year did this happen? In this, March. So yeah. right at the beginning. At the, the beginning. very beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, very beginning. when I took him to the hospital, there was no one else in the emergency. Wow. We were the first ones in there. There was no one else there. No one. Wow. And I'm sure that story changed very quickly after that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I did. I did. So... What happened when you were in the hospital? Tell me about your journey in the hospital to recovery. Well, I can tell you what I can remember. Okay. <laughs> um, we'll have Donna fill in the holes yeah, for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I do that. <laughs> oh, boy, I'll tell you. When I first got in there, I do remember them putting the feeding tube in me. Oh, wow. And, and uh, they, they said... We need you to swallow, Mr. Coleman. We need you to swallow. So they put that tube down in me, and I swallowed. You know, I gagged. I did. I remember mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. But after that tube was inserted in me, I don't remember anything else after mm -hmm. that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the next thing I do remember uh, is waking up in the bed. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were telling me that, I had pneumonia and they had to clear up the pneumonia in my lungs before they could do anything else. So I had I had pneumonia in both lungs. Wow. And uh, I was told that I, I was on the ventilator. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the ventilator was doing 90% of my breathing for me wow. at this time. So, you know, it left me with about 10%. Right, so. <laughs> right. So, uh... After uh, that, I'm telling you everything that I remember at right. this point. Sure. And I remember one one of the nurses. I remember her because I think that I worked with her at um, Pike High School. Oh. Yeah, I I, I worked in the freshman center there at Pike, mm -hmm. and uh, she was over in the high school as a nurse. Oh, okay. But her. Uh, sister she had an identical twin sister mm -hmm. and she worked with me okay. but the other one i remember her because uh, she was a nurse and she worked at iu uh, west at that time okay so uh you know as things go on you know she was the one that actually told me that they had to clear up that pneumonia in me mm. and uh well i guess once they got to that point uh, i was um uh, able to kind of remember a few things and uh, talking on the phone. Uh, I remember a few people, uh, my cousin Greg, I talked to him, uh, who's an attorney here in the city, mm -hmm. and uh, my other cousin, his brother, uh, Brian, uh, I remember talking to him, and he's in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, he's an orthopedic surgeon there. Okay. And I remember those two speaking to on the phone, speaking to them on the phone. So Morris is basically out yeah. recovering. They have him, mm -hmm. you know, under, right? Mm -hmm. And so what are the reports that you're getting from the healthcare workers? Well, they call me every morning. Okay. They give me a report on Morris. Okay. <clears throat> How he was doing and all that. And, uh, what are they saying is happening in his body? Well, there's, you're telling me the percentage that he's, you know, breathing, what the ventilator's breathing for him. Mm. Uh, they're asking me what did I want them to do if his heart stopped. Mm. I said everything you can yeah. to save his life. Yeah. But he was having a rough time. Yeah. Really rough time. So, uh, so the doctor called me after what 
I talked to the doctor like every other day. Mm -hmm. And uh, after he was on the ventilator for about mm, maybe four weeks, mm -hmm. three or four weeks, they said they're going to have to get him off the ventilator. They didn't want every, you know, because it caused other complications mm -hmm. if he stays on there too, too long. long. Mm -hmm. So the doctor had suggested to me giving more citrate. See if that helped. Mm -hmm. And it did. It went right here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So how, what were you doing at home to sort of cope? Praying. Yeah. Every minute of the day. Mm-hmm. Couldn't eat, couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. Family and friends, we all got to we pray. Yeah. Yeah. Pray. Absolutely. And God does answer prayer. Yes. Here he is. Here he, he is. is. He spared you. Yeah. So, toward the end of that four weeks, what was the transition from you know coming off of the the respirator? going into rehab what was sort of what was the timeline for that and and you know what was that like for you okay uh, when they released me from the hospital to go into the rehab you know they wheeled me out and all the staff all them they were there just to clap oh, and, and, you know, oh, and everything, awesome. you know and I couldn't do anything but tear up yeah. because I had realized then you know that I had a uh, I had something that was was really tough, you know, yeah. that it could have taken my life. Right. You know, and I was so grateful, you know, to to them, the staff at IU West, and uh, my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. just just grateful, grateful. Because at that point, you probably didn't know how it's affecting the other wor the rest of the world. No, I didn't. Because you were healing, yeah. right? Yeah. So you weren't watching the news like no. us folks at home, no. you know. We're watching the news all the day, so you don't know what's happening in Italy and no. all the other countries where it was really hitting hard at that time. No, okay. I, didn't, I didn't know that. But I do remember uh, them telling me that I had tested positive for COVID. Okay. I do remember that. Mm -hmm. and, um, Did your sister test positive for COVID? Uh, I know you said she wasn't feeling good that same Yeah, she, she wasn't. I think she had a, a taste of it. Okay. But it didn't affect her. She much younger than I am too. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, at the time when COVID hit me, I was 67 years old, mm -hmm. you know, and that's been a year ago. So um, I was one of the ones that COVID could attack. Yeah, yeah. You know. You, know, you were one of yeah, the vulnerable. One, one, yeah, the ones, I, I was over 65. Mm -hmm. So it got me, mm -hmm. and about shot me down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, but it did not. Didn't, it wasn't didn't, able to get wasn't you. Able, wasn't no. able to get, yeah. No, no, no. Okay, so what has recovery been like? Recovery for me, yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing well right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a problem with maybe short term memory sometimes. Mm -hmm. There are people that I knew names right off when I saw them. Uh, I have kind of a rough time trying to remember names but I remember all the faces mm -hmm. but it's hard to put a name to some of these people well I'll tell you that's how I've been my whole life so that's all right <laughs> it's, so there's a whole there. group of people right. yeah there's okay. a whole group of people okay. who didn't have COVID who can't remember names or remember faces well, so you can just blame it on that well, well, <laughs> well that makes me feel a little better yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want people to say, well, you know, he's crazy or something like that. No, you know, it's, a, it's a whole part group of, <laughs> of people who can't remember names, so it's all right. Okay, well, I don't feel alone anymore. Yeah, no, no, we're right there together. We're right there together. <laughs> what has recovery been like for you, being there as his helpmate? Oh, it's, it's been uh, a struggle. Mm -hmm. When he first came home. When I went and picked him up from rehab, I actually, they called and told me I could come pick him up. Mm -hmm. How did that feel? Oh, great. Yeah. 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 So I went to go pick him up. I didn't know who he was. He had a full beard. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> lost 20 Why? pounds. Wow. I lost, lost 20. Why was it? <laughs> did you? You slots it together. And so when we yeah. went home and I started cooking every day, mm -hmm. we found him. You found them? There it like that. is, yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, uh, when she did bring me home, they sent me home with a walker. And um, I didn't touch that walker. I said, Donna, I said, I'm 
I'm gonna get up and walk in this house myself. So I did, and I hadn't touched a walker since since they gave it to me. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But they did real well with me as far as the rehab and mm -hmm. and getting me back to to being able to stand and walk on my own. Mm -hmm. They did real well with that. Good. And uh, I think it may have been, you know, it was the spring of the year and uh, grass was growing real fast. I mm -hmm. think it, it may have been maybe a good two weeks or so, I went outside and started cutting grass. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah I did. That's amazing. And, and been going ever since. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. tell me, how has your spiritual journey changed because of your your encounter with COVID? Both of you. I want to know for both of you. I tell you, I've always loved the Lord. Yeah. Always. But I love him even more now. Mm -hmm. I love him even more. You know, mm -hmm. and I praise him. I praise his holy name every day. Mm -hmm. I thank him for my life. Yes. I thank him. I thank him. Yeah. Yeah. And I thank him for my wife. Yeah. My wife. You know, I there are times when I just, you know, get in my own little solitude, mm -hmm. and I uh, I just thank him and praise him, you know, for giving her to me, yeah, you know, and letting me have her. Excellent help, <laughs> mate. Yeah. Excellent help, mate. Yeah, yeah. I came home from the hospital. My home was spotless. She had mm. had the professionals come in and sanitize, clean the whole house, mm -hmm. and you know, it was just. It was just a castle for me to come back home, you know, and, and just be with my wife. That's beautiful. That's all I told him in the hospital. I said, I want to go home to my wife. I want to go home to my wife. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and when, when I had the trait in me, I couldn't couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. But they would give me a little uh, little voice box to insert in here. Mm -hmm. and, and I started being able to talk and communicate. Mm -hmm. But before that, I had to try to write what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. I was so weak. My spelling wasn't real good. My mm -hmm. writing wasn't real legible or mm -hmm. anything. So uh, they had a rough time communicating with me. And then I was getting kind of frustrated because you don't you could, could, yeah, <laughs> you don't yeah. understand. Yeah. Yeah. So all of that is a gift. You were oh, sitting yeah. here talking. Yeah. That's a gift. You mm -hmm. wouldn't even know. You yeah. wouldn't even know that that was something <laughs> that you had to go through. Yeah. Tell me about your spiritual journey. Oh. Like I like Worth said, I've always had a strong love for the, for the Lord. Mm -hmm. I had lost a child before. Mm, sorry. And I let the Lord know, Lord, please, just send my husband home to me. I mm -hmm. need him. I haven't had him long enough. Right. Yeah. 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 And he sent him home to me. He spared his life. Yeah. And uh, our, our bond is even stronger. Yeah. 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 That's beautiful. Yeah. 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 God yeah. is good all the time. All the all time. The time. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> so if there's anything that you, if there would be anything that you want to say to folks now, mm -hmm. COVID it doesn't have the same, um, we don't have the same fear right. that we had when it first came. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little bit more that we understand. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of the population who is vaccinated now. Mm -hmm. And so there is a feeling of relief, but also um, there's a little bit of more of a, a lax on um, on people wanting to participate in staying safe. Mm -hmm. So if you had a message, both of you having lived through this, mm -hmm. to folks now where COVID is still here, it's still doing its thing, what would your message be to folks on staying safe and, and, and avoiding what you had to go through? My, my message to the people is the vaccine was conjured up to keep you from getting COVID. Mm -hmm. Now, I, my advice is to the people, take the vaccine, take the vaccine. You know, it, it can save your life. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't understand why so many are, uh, well, I do understand some parts of it, mm -hmm. but I don't understand why these people won't take it and people are still dying every day. Mm -hmm. They're dying every day. And it's very important that you get it. My wife and I have had both of our vaccines. Mm -hmm. We've had it. And, uh, so even, because there's some people who have, who have had COVID 
who don't want to get the vaccine too. So even as a person who has lived through COVID, you still feel like it was important to get the vaccine? Yes. Yeah. Um, the doctors, uh, I've heard some doctors say that you have some immunity mm -hmm. uh, after having COVID, mm -hmm. but uh, you're not totally immune from COVID. You, right. know, you might have some, but the vaccine, I feel that me having COVID, that the vaccine has even enhanced mm -hmm. my uh, chances of not getting it again. Yeah. You know. And it and, definitely not affecting you the way it did the first time. Right. Yeah. Right. But uh, it's the attitude of people. Your attitude. You know, if if you want to uh, live this life, uh, there there are other medications and things that you take, and you don't even know what's in the medications. Yeah. So. Why not try the vaccine? Take the vaccine. It can save your life. Okay. It can save you. And what would you say to folks out here in the world and on, on this side of COVID, even though we're not on the other side, but yeah. just like in this part of the COVID journey, what would you say to folks? I would also say the same. Mm. Get the vaccine. Mm. Oh, I have a little sore arm, you know, mm -hmm. that was it. But. When I go grocery shopping or whatever, I still put on my mask. Okay. When I go in the grocery store mm -hmm. and places like that. But uh, care about other people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You could be walking around with COVID and not know it and spread it to your loved ones. Exactly. Yeah. So get the vaccine. Care about other people. Yeah. If you don't care enough about yourself. Yeah. Care about others. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, there was a lot of things that we had to do, especially in the beginning, to keep each other safe. We had to stay home, you know, yeah. wear masks, stay six feet apart, wash your hands, all of those things that we were told. And hopefully this experience has been able to connect us more yeah. as humans, exactly. having a human experience yeah. here. And so hopefully hearing your story, your magnificent story, um, will also help connect us more mm -hmm. and allow folks to take care of themselves and encourage us to continue to take care of each other. Yes. Thank you so much for coming today <laughs> oh, and you. sharing your story with us. It's so important. So happy mm -hmm. that you're here. Yes, so I happy that you. both of you are thank here, that you, you were here for thank him. Yeah. And thank you so much for sharing your story today. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>